Hello again. How's everyone doing? Another beautiful day in the scrap metal world. 17 degrees. Just got off the interstate. Had to stop. Just get a little, get a small one. A little pick me up. A little snack. Rosie's in the back. Can't see her. We're having hash browns. You know what I noticed? Um, all these fast food places, you know, I don't have much of a choice up here. It's uh, a couple Dunkin' Donuts and, you know, your basic stuff, McDonald's. But, uh, of course, when I come down s south here, uh, there's some more choices. But, you know... It always seems like there's always something that's not right with these places. Like they're out of something or something's wrong. It's just like, you know, in today's technology and everything and all the people that need jobs and stuff, you know. I mean, how hard is it to you know, get things right. It's very simple. I mean, it's a simple menu. Probably, you know, there's one person in there doing one job. But anyway, you know, today I just kind of felt like something different. I was going to kind of wait for lunch, but then as the morning went on, I I needed something, just something. And I figured it might be a good day for a bagel. You know, I don't get bagels too often. And uh, I really felt like an everything bagel toasted with cream cheese. It's my old friend Frank's favorite thing. He used to get two of them every morning. He would eat two of those. And he would get real mad if they didn't put the cream cheese on. But I wanted that today. And, you know, it's always something. You pull up and, oh, we don't have any bagels at all. Dunkin' Donuts. Well, it's just called Dunkin' now, but no bagels, not one in the house. Just my luck, you know, the one day I want it. So, all I could really think of was the classic sausage, egg, and cheese wraps. You know, not too much carbs with the bread, uh, probably better off. But, you know, you get... They cut a sausage patty in half. They cut an egg patty in half. They put it on there. You got some of that nice processed fake cheese. Actually, they ripped that. You can see they ripped that patty right in half. Looks like. But, you know, you get the saltiness of the cheese. It's not bad. It's a nice little snack, a little, little breakfast taco. what you got yeah probably still not the best for you but what are you gonna do you're on the road need a quick snack what are you gonna buy in the store just gonna waste your money on crap in there So, been really busy lately. A lot of cars. Of course, you saw the buy one, get one free cars. 2011 caliber. Spit the connecting rod right out. Be sure to check that out. I wish I had a, I wish I had a camera pointing underneath. 
see that thing come right out of there, but that is a nice bonus when that happens. When you get pieces, it's, it's a good boot video. I like to see the pieces come out. Well, that other car, 2006 Nissan Murano, turned out that car wasn't charging and people said they had a new alternator put in but the alternator did not look new it looked very old but that car having what they call a CVT transmission um, if those get below a certain voltage they won't work. They'll go into a limp mode, which that car was in. It would rev right up fine, but as soon as you put it in gear and step on the gas, nothing would happen. So once I um, put a fresh battery in, charged up fully, all of a sudden, the car started doing everything it was supposed to do. Moved around, went in gear, Everything worked. I thought it, I thought I I thought it started charging because I messed around with some connections and I thought I had fixed it. But not the case. Still checked it. Still wasn't charging. Let it sit there and idle for a long time. Eventually, slowly, everything would die and shut off. Um, you know, once it lost its charge. So, the car was a pretty fancy car. Otherwise, needed one tire. So I kind of had it sitting there. And I thought about, you know, I did watch a couple of YouTube videos of guys uh, fixing ground issues and stuff, so... I did check all that kind of stuff out. Thinking that I might be able to find something stupid that the, the people missed, you know. But I put a little bit of time into it in the garage and still nothing. So I thought about blowing it up. Probably would have been a hard one, Nissan. Nissan Maxima engine, 3.5 V6. Um, Nissan are the worst cats out of the whole cat market. So, there wasn't really much money there, but the car didn't stand me any money after I scrapped the uh, Dodge Caliber. I got my money back, you know, that I paid for both, so the Nissan was kind of free at that point. Minus, you know, fuel and stuff, towing the stuff around. But, um, so I was just, I ended up getting a couple other vehicles and I got that fancy Ford Ranger for free. So, I really, uh, was like, you know, gonna start snowing a lot soon and the driveway is gonna get pretty messy and I'm gonna have to start thinking about moving snow around on top of that my little Raider plow rig uh, doesn't want to run now started it up after after the summer of sitting it started right up I drove it in the driveway and now it won't start acts like it's got no spark so I've been messing with that and uh, luckily we've only had little dustings of snow so uh, I've gotten lucky so far in the driveway situation, but I can't have all these vehicles around. I don't have a lot of room. Uh, so, I decided before I bring that Nissan down or blow it up or scrap it, I would uh, yeah, throw it out Marketplace real quick for a one-day only sale and uh, See if somebody else wants to mess with it. You know, it's it's one of those ones. Usually, there's no sense in doing it because 
you know, like that Dodge Caliber purred like a kitten, but it was so rotted that, you know, you don't want to sell that to anyone because they're going to have a hard time getting that thing on the road and inspect it and everything. But the Nissan was right on that line of, you know, the ones that, eh, you know, a little better than scrap. Usually I don't care because uh, it doesn't pay to try to help someone else sell them a, a used car for cheap because uh, they'll end up coming back on you. I've had it happen plenty of times and that's the reason why I don't do it. So anyway, anyway, uh, I put it on there and to my surprise, there's a lot of interest in it. So, a couple people came and looked at it. One guy said, oh, got to see about getting money, coming back. And put it on there for $1,000. Figuring, you know, somebody offers me anything close to six or eight hundred, I'd be, uh, I'd be doing pretty well. I wouldn't have to haul it. So... One guy came down and uh, he ended up, he offered me 800, I was gonna take it and then uh, he needed a, he was thinking about, you know, trying to get a tow truck to come get it. It was Sunday night and uh, here we are standing right next to my truck and trailer that's all hooked up. I said, well, how far are you going? It was only uh, two towns over. It was only about uh, 10 minutes down the road to where he needed to bring it. He wanted to drive it. I said, I do not recommend it because as soon as that battery dies, you're screwed. But um, I said, listen, I said, uh, oh, he wanted to test drive it too. And I, I really said, I'd rather you not test drive it because I don't want to get into something that, you know, it's, uh, you know, freezing cold out and raining and stuff. And it's like, you know, that thing dies down the road. We got a big mess on our hands and uh, pushing it back or going to pick it up on the side of the road, no plate, stuff like that. So I just said, you know, this is how I'm selling it. I mean, I'm not hiding anything, you know. So I said it. I said, listen, I said, for $900, I'll start up my truck, pull it forward. I said, and you can drive the, the thing right on the trailer and witness the transmission and witness everything work, the brakes. Every, I mean, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. You can't get a vehicle like that, an 06 all-wheel drive, fully loaded, all leather. I mean, you know, I was an expensive vehicle in its day can't get one of those that runs and drives for under a thousand dollars so you know you might put an alternator in and be all set but it ain't an easy thing to put an alternator in that you take the radiator out and the fans and all the stuff and it's a pretty big job to get to it but you might do that you might be fine and then you're good and then you're driving a you know a nice vehicle for you know um, for around a thousand bucks but um, you might get deeper into it. It might be something else. That's it. On a sale. And uh, he said, that sounds like a deal to me. And I said, you can drive it right on there and I'll bring it right over to your house and drop it off. Follow you right home. So he peeled off the money and that was it. Nice little sale. I don't have to haul it too far. Don't have to mess with it anymore. It's out of the driveway. It's not often that that happens, but I was very happy with that. And uh, hopefully he's happy with the vehicle and he gets it fixed and turns out to be good for him and his family to drive around. I got uh 2001 F-150 on the trailer right now. I'm taking down. There's not too much to see. It's a non-runner. It's a 4.6 four-wheel drive. Um, 
you know, it doesn't run. Uh, the girl says, you know, had it sitting at her apartment complex and uh, her ex-boyfriend, she thinks, sugared the tank. I don't know, is that an old, old, uh, an old tale or is that, you know, does that still happen? Does it even work? I don't know, but that's what she said. And now the thing doesn't run. Personally, I think he might have cut something out of it. I couldn't find anything. Um, of course, I made an offer on the truck. I went to pick it up, and uh, I noticed uh, that these trucks, you know, they're supposed to have four cats, and the back two were deleted. Pieces of pipe right welded right in there, and uh, front two cats were there, but as I noticed, there was a small weld right before, a little square patch before each cat. Now, what that told me is uh, they wanted to hollow those out because they thought that they were plugged maybe and it was running bad. Um, and a lot of times, especially in um, past years when, you know, the price of converters wasn't really that high, um, a lot of guy, a lot of shops would cut a little hole and then ram a bar up there and uh, break up all the material, the precious metal that's worth all the money inside. Um, and they would dump it right out, throw it in the trash, and then you would have a free flowing exhaust again. And they'd weld that back up, and that's what it seemed like to me. So I said, I cannot. I said, I don't buy vehicles, you know. Uh, without converters that's just what I tell everyone I do not unless it's something like you know really cool or something that I want parts off of um, something like that but uh, you know I told her that and she was pretty bummed out and she obviously needs money like everyone else but she had a newer car and the place was um, it's like a, a housing, you know, development sort of, and there's a maintenance person, and, you know, they keep an eye on vehicles, and you can't have something sitting there like that that's dead, you know, and uh, uninsured, unregistered. So, um, she needed it gone, needless to say, and I said, well, I mean, if it helps you out, you know, I said, you know, I'll give you $50 for it or something, you know, just to, I said, but that's the only way, you know, I can do anything for you. And she said, well, you know, um, could you do a hundred bucks? Uh, you know, it really helped me out. And uh, it's got four aluminum wheels on it. And I said, well, still a heavy truck. And I said, uh, I mean, uh, there's a slight chance that those front cats, you know, could have been maybe someone just, you know, whatever. There's still, who knows, crazier things happen. But I said, okay. I said, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Help you out, you know, get it out of here. So she was very thankful. And uh, I don't really like calling the ones like that that aren't, you know, that it's not going to be worth it in the end. But I tried to get it running, couldn't get it running. So I just cut behind the two front cats because at this point it's missing the rear two, so I can't sell it as complete. So either way, I got to gamble and make sure that those are empty. Uh, it'd be silly to just take it in and not know. So I cut behind, and sure enough, they were empty. Nobody home inside those. So that's just what I thought happened. They hollowed them out. So anyway, I got a hundred bucks into it and uh, I tried. One kid in town had a truck the same, around the same year. And I tried selling it to him. Maybe he wanted a parts truck. I could unload it, you know, for um, a little bit more than scrap or even scrap price. That way I didn't have to haul it down, but he was all set didn't want to buy it so um, that's it take it down and whatever it weighs that's what I get it's uh, 150 a ton so 
it's um, you know fuel to get down here and the truck probably weighs 45 maybe around 5,000 pounds uh, I got the four wheels and tires which will bring me $44 so plus I scrapped that S10 which uh, didn't really want to blow that one up because uh, it ran like shit and it was actually catching fire inside the airbox and that was a big uh, problem for me because um, you know the water's all shut off outside uh, I got no hose I got you know to put out a fire I got no fire extinguisher right now so I was just like you know bring that one in scrap it but anyway, when I brought it down there, I took the wheels off, I separated it, you know, cut the cat, and I made out okay, but I didn't notice the girl inside the thing. She didn't pay me for the four wheels. I got screwed $44. I noticed it a couple days later. I happened to have the slip in my pocket. I looked at it. The wheels weren't listed. I added it up, sure enough. So anyway, I called the guy. I, I know him. Kind of, you know pretty much friends with him at this point and he said yeah we'll take care of you you know uh next time down of course you know someone that owns a business and you're running a business should be a little friendlier to people you know i didn't get an apology or anything but you know that's something that a lot of people overlook i guess that's old school stuff but Myself, I would have said, you know, I apologize for that, and uh, I'll take care of you next time you're down here, get you paid for those wheels, but whatever. So, I'll get the weight of this, and uh, I'll get paid for the wheels on that. I got two lug nuts on each wheel, I just whip them off with the impact, take it away, and uh, I'll get paid for my S10 wheels while I'm down here. And uh, we'll try to go get another one. So, have you heard enough of me babbling? It's been 22 minutes. Uh, nice little talk. Rosie's snoring. Ate her hash browns. She's snoring again. So, I'm going to continue on. And uh, get this day going. You know where I'm at now. What's that a sign of? Crackers. Got that chili. Gotta get it. Celebrate. See how it is today. Oh, it looks good. Oh, yeah. Perfect consistency. Let's check temperature. Yeah. Could be hotter, but... 
I'll take it. Weather's getting a little bad. Road started to get uh, kind of bad going down there. Rosie's got her chicken nuggets to swallow. Takes it so carefully. Yeah. Front brakes were uh, sliding a little bit on me. ABS was kicking in. Gotta be careful got a lot of weight on the tongue especially when you well you have a hydraulic lift gate that weighs probably 12 1300 pounds you got that on the back and then we had a 2001 f-150 that weighed 5260 pounds Big rigging, boys. We pulled in the scale at 13,840. 13,000 pounds, 840, almost 14,000 pounds. Half ton Chevy truck and trailer. Big rigging. We weighed out. 8580 that's just the truck well that was the truck trailer and uh, the four wheels that I took off the truck off the Ford so it left us with a payout weight of 5260 which gave us three hundred and ninety four dollars and fifty cents not too shabby for just scrap metal uh, we got paid for the four wheels and tires, and we also got paid for the other set that I didn't get paid for last time off the S10. Eight rims with tires for $88, which gave us a total of $482.50. Not too bad, almost a $500 payout. And uh, we got chili. I mean, what else could you really want? You got money. You got chili. What are you looking at back there? I see you. You wouldn't like the chili. You got a 2010 Silverado. Just got uh, cruising through the snow. That's it. And uh, even better. Got a call. Possibly get another one when we get back to town. Yep. Nissan Pathfinder. If it meets my criteria, I'll be picking it up on the way home. And that's it. Not a bad Friday. Celebrate, you know. Do what you want to do. A couple drinks, a couple things. And uh, that's it.